address uh, in his initial statements, uh, the state senator Seitz uh, pointed out that the legislators are paying dues to this, and that makes all of this fine because it's a uh, um, so they're paying dues and they see some value in it. Uh, thanks to the uh, work of people like Lisa Graves uh, behind me who will be speaking next, uh, we know that over 98% of the money that uh, ALEC receives comes from uh, corporations and lobbyists. Um, to pretend that uh, this is being financed uh, uh, by legislators for legislators is simply not true. Um, uh, the amount of money the legislators put in is a token amount to the value that they get out. Um, Many legislators have gotten thousands, of, upwards of five thousand dollars worth of reimbursements for travel and meals for their uh, fifty dollars, fifty dollars a year that they're uh, contributing. And uh, it, uh, I think it's pretty much common sense that uh, that they're not, uh, they're getting much more out of it than they're putting in financially. And uh, it's really a shame that they're using a loophole for legitimate programs, like Brian mentioned, to uh, cover what is, I think, clearly. Uh, violation of the spirits of the ethics laws of the state. So uh, next up I'd like to uh, present uh, Lisa Graves. She's the executive director of the Center for Media and Democracy. Um, they've been one of the uh, leading people um, nationally on exposing ALEC and they are also run the site uh, ALEC Exposed. So if I'd like to uh, turn it over to Lisa so she can talk about, uh, uh, kind of put a national context uh, on the report and you know, point out any uh, any points of interest we might have uh, missed along the way. So, the way. <coughs> Go ahead, Lisa. Okay. Well, thank you so much for including me by Skype. I really appreciate it. Can you hear me all right? Is the sound good? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm honored to join this press conference with Progress Ohio. They've done a tremendous job on this report um, about this uh, documenting the Alec role in the state. Uh, with the seven deadly sins, and I think it's really a compelling case of the normalization of corruption that ALEC uh, provides. Um, my organization, the Center for Media Democracy, is a watchdog group. We're located in Madison, Wisconsin, but we're a national group, and we took a particular interest in Ohio because ALEC had its spring meeting there in Cincinnati in 2011. And as a result of that conference, I was contacted by a whistleblower who had all of the ALEC legislation that had been pre-approved uh, through ALEC task forces. Um, on ALEC task forces, corporate lobbyists, representatives from think tanks, and legislators, elected officials, vote as equals. They vote as equals on, on model legislation to change the rights of people in the Buckeye State and other states. So we discovered through looking through these bills that we analyzed and put on our site, alecexposed.org, um, the extent, the depth and breadth and duration of this agenda uh, by these corporate lobbyists and by politicians who um, really debase themselves by not just giving uh, corporate lobbyists um, uh, a voice or an opportunity to weigh in on legislation like all uh, people in the state do, but this is a situation in which through ALEC task forces, corporate lobbyists are actually voting as equals with um, legislators. That's why I call it debasing, because an ordinary citizen doesn't get to go off to these resorts and these parties and rub elbows with these legislators for three days for free, um, where they go on these basic vacations. Um, uh, these corporate lobbyists, many of them are from out of state. Uh, a number of them are in-state lobbyists who have business before the state, but a number of them represent out of state, out of country global corporations. And they go off to a resort and they um, they are wined and dined, schmoozed and boozed, as uh, Ohio Progress, uh, Progress Ohio has documented. Um, and then they come back to their state houses and introduce these bills, cleansed of any reference to the fact that they were pre-voted on by ALEC corporations. So we call ALEC a corporate bill mill. We think it's a corporate bill mill because it's largely funded by corporations. Its annual revenues are about $7 million a year. Over 98% of its funding comes from corporations and sources other than legislative dues, which, which are $50 a year. Um, as Brett said, you know, this is a nominal amount. It's really window dressing uh, that, that provides a, a, a way in uh, for these legislators to get trips worth thousands of dollars and also for their staff to get trips worth thousands of dollars. Uh, we know from our uh, open records requests in Ohio, uh, which are the foundation for this particular report, 
um, that Ohio uh, state lawmakers and their staff spent an enormous amount of time, um, as, as noted by Brett um, and Mr. Rothenberg, um, uh, we know that they spent an enormous amount of time arranging uh, these lobby visits, basically, these lobbying dinners. And so what we saw when we investigated this <clears throat> with one of our freelance investigators, um, we discovered that uh, Alec is taking advantage of, a, of a, in essence, a loophole in Ohio law, which we think should not be construed this way, but it allows uh, for um, an exemption from Ohio's gift rules, in essence, uh, for um, meetings, uh, annual meetings, in essence, of a group if the legislature pays dues uh, to that group. So in Ohio, the majority has authorized $1,000 in so-called dues to go to legislature that then provides a vehicle for thousands and thousands of dollars worth of gifts to flow into primarily the Republican caucus here in the state uh, through these trips and to their staff. One of the astonishing things we found in our investigation was that uh, Rep. Adams' uh, main staffer uh, actually received the ALEC Award of, quote, Volunteer of the Year for ALEC uh, while, while uh, doing this work uh, as a state employee uh, for this, the people of the state of Ohio. And her primary job, it appears from those emails, was to arrange special dinners for lobbyists and make sure that lobbyists and legislators got tickets uh, to baseball games, for example. We know that uh, those tickets to the baseball games, the Reds game, uh, when they had the Cincinnati event, uh, most of the members did not disclose the benefit of that gift for themselves, their spouse, uh, and others. Uh, we know that when they've gone off to New Orleans uh, to these dinners um, at fancy restaurants uh, that are paid for by lobbyists, that many, much of that is not disclosed to the people of Ohio, so they have no transparency, uh, no real transparency, uh, to see who's influencing uh, your lawmakers uh, there in the state. We think that this is wrong. We were shocked to find that the Ethics uh, Commission in Ohio is largely constituted of ALEC members who, of course, think this is not wrong. And so we join um, Progress Ohio in calling for reform, um, reform of the ethics rules in Ohio to make the law mean what it says, and that you shouldn't have a loophole where if you give a, a nominal amount to an organization like ALEC, which uh, is which claims to be bipartisan, which but which is in fact largely a partisan organization with a largely partisan agenda, uh, that that organization can't just turn around and be the conduit for gifts, which they call scholarships or these gifts of dinners. While well, Alec and its uh, legislative reps in the state have claimed uh, that this is um, that this is just an attack effort against them, uh, my organization is a good government organization. We've uh, documented. Uh, problems in both Republicans and Democratic administrations. Uh, they have suggested that, I just want to conclude by saying that they've suggested that we're a fringe organization. It's absurd. Uh, just so you know, for the record, I'm the former Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the United States Department of Justice under both Ms. Reno and Mr. Ashcroft in the Office of Policy Development. I also serve as the Chief Counsel for nominations for the United States Senate Judiciary Committee, and I also serve as the Deputy Chief of the United States Court System for the Article III Judges Division. Uh, we document every single thing that we say on our site about ALEC Exposed, about ALEC, and on PR Watch and our investigations. And what we've documented here is a classic case of corruption of Ohio officials.